healthcare advisor. Sorry to interrupt. The constituents are are anxious. Will you push for Medicare for all? Health, yeah. Yes. Do we even need to explain it? No. Okay, I want to explain a little bit. Yeah, let's bit. explain it anyway, considering this is apparently an issue. Okay, okay. So, you know how before I was talking about pensions and such? I don't know. Hopefully, it'll be in the same episode. But so far, it, it, jobs are what's providing people with better health care options. And the unfortunate thing is, if your health care is tied to your work, if you ever get laid, laid off, off or, or put fired. in a position... Also, there are so many companies that to, to specifically avoid giving their workers health care, they put them on part-time. Yeah, for like 32 hours, so it's not... Yeah, they, they force you out. Yeah, well, they don't force they you out. They force me out. When I was working a, a part-time minimum wage job at... A, Joanne Fabrics I remember that one day the next worker wasn't clocking in properly and they had to keep me on a little while but because I had clocked out like 30 minutes after my manager was worried and was actually cutting hours for me later in the week mm -hmm. because I couldn't go over Yep, because they don't want to have to pay health care which goes back to the whole McDonald's thing that we were talking about earlier of just like yeah, everyone outside the U.S., why is this an issue? And I think the thing is, because a lot of people believe that their private insurance and private healthcare is better, and I think that is a potential possibility, but the problem is that comes at such a high cost for everyone else And the other thing that too, it's just truly not worth it. And the thing, too, is a lot of my family worked in the dental industry, and... Dental, if you notice, is always kind of separate from healthcare. It's I, I think eye and dental is always separate. I think that when you pay for healthcare, it should be for oh. all three. Well, what? every everything related to people's health should be socialized purely just because not everybody is built the same way. Some people are born unlucky. And no. it feels like putting the financial weight on them. Uh, well, insulin is a good example. Yeah, yeah. People, uh, I have a friend that I grew up with, and his younger sister had diabetes. And I never really understood uh, diabetes at all, but I did understand that it was stupid expensive uh, because once we were close to whatever her like her insulin subscription was prescription. There we mm -hmm. go. And we had to be very careful and like leave the room because you know a bunch of rowdy seven-year-olds could uh, cost the family a lot of money or something. Gosh, it's been 23 years, so give me a but bit of a break for But the other thing, too, is, especially with that, the fact that some pharmaceutical companies can decide those oh, prices price and gouge yeah. people. And I, uh, so the other thing, too, is uh, to go back to the whole, like, the dental thing. So my... My family is a proponent for preventative care. You you go for your your regular checkups and you get your tooth cleaning or teeth cleanings and such because the more you put that off, the more likely you are to not just get mild cavities that you get a little bit of a resin filling in. No, you start getting the deeper ones that eventually the tooth becomes unsalvageable and you have to get a root canal and you have to get extractions and guess what? Those teeth cleanings probably about $60 typically, but to get all of the fillings and the root canals and the worst stuff will run you hundreds and eventually thousands, if yep. not dozens of thousands of dollars. And think about the people who don't get on uh, better diets or uh, a regimen of medications that will be able to prevent, say, heart attacks or rise in cholesterol levels. Yeah, you wait until it's too late and then it costs a lot more. And you might end up like some of my family members where you have to have open heart surgery. Yeah. And that is debilitating. It's so expensive, especially if you're in the hospital for multiple days. So if everyone had access to preventative health care, you would have fewer people going into debt for very extreme cases. Yeah, and, and even for the people that are unlucky, they don't ruin their lives because of something they can't necessarily control. Yeah. Had to go to the emergency room recently. Got a bill for seven thousand dollars. Even with your insurance, I still owe two grand to cover my deductible. I w went to. Um, you, I w we donated blood. Yeah, I donated blood. <laughs> I didn't donate blood. Red I may be Cross positive, but... donated blood. Uh, it was like a couple days after returning from Croatia, which I guess was fine. 
Uh, His family likes to donate, and I was curious as to what Quadra's blood type was. Yeah, so I was like, sure. You know what? I'm a grown man. It's time for me to start donating blood. I get there, give blood. It's fine. Feeling a bit woozy. It's okay. I pass the hell out and land on my head. He fell in the opposite direction of me at the table, so I could not hold him. She felt real bad that she didn't catch me, but like, I was fine. So, uh, they were like, okay, well, by policy, we need to send you to a hospital uh, to make sure that you don't have a head injury because, you know, they don't want me suing Red Cross uh, for making it worse. And so they do. And they're like, yeah, we're going to cover it and everything. And they didn't. Cost me $1,000 to take a ambulance. To get checked out for a concussion. To get checked out for a concussion. And to get more which liquids. Which took three hours because the nurses were so busy dealing with other way more important people than me. Uh, so there I was for like three hours taking up a bed, taking up people's time. I just wanted somebody to just check me out and let me go. Because the only thing wrong with me was that I was dehydrated and anemic as a result. And, like, yeah, when it came down to it, the Red Cross didn't pay. And they probably should have, and I probably should have pressed it further. Oh, yeah. Uh, but my insurance didn't pay for it. This and is so good... it was a $1,000 deductible. I like this point that uh, Cold Heart's bringing up. That, yeah, because of all the insurance companies that people have to work with, I remember... Well, it's uh, incentivized for them to make wasteful policies. Yeah, they make so wasteful they can policies skim as much money companies. as possible. Yeah, because... because a hospital or let's go say the dental office like the example I was giving before they have like in partnered um, medical uh, insurance companies and such and the thing is they have to have all of this paperwork to contact the insurance companies uh, just it, it is so inefficient and some companies can say yay to a procedure other companies can say no to a procedure and it causes a lot of confusion for the doctors, it causes a lot of confusion for patients, it causes a lot of confusion all throughout. And as was mentioned there, the administration and the paperwork and everything costs so much and it's so inefficient. And it's, if we had a government run single payer healthcare system, it would, it, it would abolish all of that. And the only reason why these companies are so scared of it is because, well, then there's no reason for them to exist anymore. And people won't need their services. It's like why we we don't do our taxes through the government, but you have things like TurboTax coming in and saying, no, you have to pay us a couple hundred dollars so that you can, you can file your taxes and then get your $100 check back. If you're thinking about it, you're actually spending money for these tax providers to uh, to do your taxes for you. And maybe it's even more than the money that you'd get back. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's disgusting. In any case, yes. This is going to throw us hell into debt, but that's okay. Oh, gosh. It's fine. Socialized healthcare is actually slavery. Oh, it's Fox News. Ah, 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 ah. It's time to attack and kill God. Wasn't that it? Oh, investments. Oh wait, you should do it. You're, uh, you're a guy. Investments are languishing, so I prepared an economic development package, cash and near cash incentives. Wait, what? Oh, effectively just dumping money into the stock market. If we said nope, what would it do? So, this makes our debt worse. Wait, wait, no, but look! And our pollution our, worse. Our pollution is worse. Nope. Three months of paid parental leave for everybody. Uh, come on, d read it out. Three months of paid parental leave for everybody. It's an extra $1.6 a week in payroll taxes. No excuses. Sure. The gender pay gap is still a thing and it shouldn't be. Reintroduce the Paycheck Fairness Act. A step in the right direction. Equal pay for equal work. Yeah, hell yeah. Definitely. I bet if politicians had to publish their tax returns, they'd be less inclined to use the defend tax havens. We, yep. Yep. Duh. Uh-oh. 
Go on, read it. Infighting alert. Wait, no. Uh, what voice do I give this guy? You were guy? giving him the donkey voice. Infighting alert. A batch of leftist candidates are challenging our party incumbents. Don't endorse them. Unity. I'll endorse them. Yo, let's establish a progressive tax on extreme wealth. It will only affect the 0.1%, so not even the 1%. And raise trillions. This is this is something I'm always wildly thrown off by. I know a lot of people like to think like taxes are bad, but I mean, partly we do need better tax. So when we were talking about all of those Silicon Valley giant businesses coming in, and sure they're giving jobs to people, but they're actually just bringing in very wealthy transplants from other states to then force out the local populace and increase rent for everyone, and don't put any money into the surrounding town and city because they they get off on so much taxes or they they don't provide uh Let's taxes see. for yeah so it's just I have something to say about the gender working thing it's not the women are getting less money for the same job it's different jobs that pay different it's not actually true uh so i mentioned i Th haven't that, that worked... specific legislation was for women being hired into a position at say let's go say that you have two office workers and the they're both... man on average, men and women in the same position will the women will be paid less. I remember, like I said, I was working at a satellite office for uh, Nickelodeon making games, and a couple of the female employees had asked me, you know, when I was hired, how much I was getting paid. And the answer is, I got paid dirt because I was still I was still a college student. Uh, but then I talked to some of the guys who got hired after me that got paid. I think. I was getting paid 12, the girls were getting paid 15, and the guys were getting paid 18 to like 30-something. And admittedly, a lot of the 30-somethings were the programmers instead, but within the art, like the art group, the guys on average were paid better, even though the girls were absolutely the ones that were doing most of the work, with the exception of like the lead animator and one of the art directors. It's interesting because a lot of people say that it's still so prevalent because oh but you know men are the breadwinner winners of their family and then they also say that well men are just better at negotiating when they first acquire the job they don't just accept the first offer they they push yeah. for more money and i maybe there's a lot of factors that go into it because uh interestingly enough actually one thing was it oh yeah, I won't go against the group here. I mean, I, I think ultimately, I think this is something that is disappearing to some degree, but uh, a lot of the pay gap issues and all sorts of demographics could be mitigated by getting rid of the taboo of talking uh, directly about their salaries. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that and actually healthcare. Uh, that one of the reasons why people in, uh, in countries with socialized healthcare actually are happier and have better jobs is because they don't go for the first job that will hire them. Oh, 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 here's another thing about, like, the reason why there's a pay difference between men and women. There are also, there's instances where people are less likely to hire women because they're worried that women are going to get pregnant and yep. have to take off copious amounts of work, or that, oh, they, they're going to have menstrual periods, they're not going to be... You know, as productive during that time of the month, and you you do have people like that that are, yeah, they're they are they already have that that prejudice against female workers. Also, hey Anna, thank you for yeah. the raid. We're getting incredibly political here. Yeah. Uh, which we're, is common for the times. We're going into debt. Eat the rich. Positive social it's reforms, fine. But we're going we're to eat the rich. We're taxing the wealthy. Eat the rich. <laughs> so, but I suppose we didn't really get to talk about. I mean, I, I did. We did talk about why just, we wanted to tax yeah, the rich. Yeah, if you got a million dollars, you got ninety nine nine hundred and ninety nine million dollars to share. Not really, but like <laughs> straight up, if you got a billion dollars, a tax on you is not going to change your lifestyle in the slightest. But like. A hefty tax on poor people? Oh boy. Like, I, I understand why people dislike taxes just because it is, it really is one of those that like, it can mean the difference between paying certain bills sometimes. Which is why you really want to 
tax the top and make sure that they actually pay their taxes as opposed to don't pay taxes because of shitty loopholes forever. Mm-hmm. Yep, definitely. Oh, oh, so Jacqueline Magazine. Is it like a little jackal? Interesting. Under the new wealth tax, billionaires will be taxed at the same rate as the middle class homeowners. Well, wait, they weren't? What was that saying? What was the... What was the rate before then? Not great. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wait, but well, we're not we're no longer. We're in not deficit. in deficit, you dunce. <laughs> Keep going. We're in de deficit. Only Republicans are allowed to blow big holes in the budget. We're the responsible ones. We're we're not actually. Oh no, it's Fox News. Well, what is it <laughs> what are they saying? <laughs> Well, this this is actually a. I believe it's supposed to be a woman. Like, oh, I okay, I see the dress. shoulders. Yeah, yeah. Like, Question: You once said billionaires should not exist. Literally. <laughs> Rural America's been neglected by the Democrats, but there's a lot we can do there. Let me help you. Sure. Do we need a rural advisor? Yeah. Come on, yeah. read, read, read what Corbin's he says. Corbin's gotten a get big or get out deal. Bust the monopolies and we'll, be, we'll all be merry. Yeah. This is actually a serious issue. This is a very serious issue. So talking about just the uh, how large corporations are only getting larger and buying everyone else out. That is definitely what's happening in the farming sector. Large factory farms have so much control over copious amounts of land, livestock, growing practices, etc. And they're not being regu regulated effectively. And the problem too is they're able to work so much more efficiently by cutting costs and actually leading to uh, unhealthy animals and workers, circum circumstances even. for their workers and such. That what's occurring is the small farmers just can't compete yeah and they're forced out of business and sometimes they're uh, i remember watching a documentary on this but there are saboteurs from these large factory farms that will sometimes go out and kill entire like chicken factories of like smaller farm owners because all you need to do is cut off the uh, air conditioning or something like that. I don't know. That, maybe, maybe that's getting a little bit too con <laughs> much into conspiracies and stuff. Well, no, it, it's provable that but specifically. Uh, they they had a lot of lawsuits. Well, ten years ago and stuff. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it is kind of a mixture between regulatory capture and just basic business. In general, on a quote unquote leveling level playing field, the bigger business will always have the advantage just because of how much money they have that they can starve the competition by lowering prices without running out themselves. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's part of the reason why Amazon is so successful now because they can they can effectively undercut everyone forever and always win. Uh, which is why it should actually, uh, it, it's so spooky to see. And it's a race to the bottom. Yeah, it is a race to the bottom. And when that happens, the little guy always loses. Because or when almost you, always loses. When you have these big companies and very little competition, it means that they can, they can keep lowering their prices to ensure that new competition doesn't exist. But then also that the, yeah, the... The quality of life for their workers and any kind of regulations attempted to like impose upon them some manner of responsibility for the pollution they cause or the terrible work practices and a bunch of other things they don't they feel like they don't have to comply because they can just throw money at the issue and be like let me make you go away yep yep so break yeah them break them up except we haven't done anything about our greenhouse gases we, we have a very little money, but we've been giving a lot of power to the people. Yeah, I, I think it's mostly focusing, focusing on social reform, but we, yeah. We need more environmental reform soon. Nice economy you got right there. It'd be a shame if something happened to it. <gasps> Wait, is this a shark lobbyist? Is, is this a sh threat or get lost? Is this a threat? Wait. Wait, whoa, wait. This is not a policy thing. This is just a dialogue. This is just a dialogue, but if the lobbyist... That, that sounds like a threat, if he's saying... Is this a threat? Yep. Of course not, but all these taxes and regulations are pissing off Wall Street. They're playing with fire, con 
comrade. <laughs> it's my mandate. <laughs> and if you can't refuse, you give us a few tax exempt development zones and we'll start a new business. Well, wait, wait, is he a loan shark? Is that what yeah, the, the whole deal is? Ish. Okay. You give yeah, us a few should tax be banned. exempt oh, absolutely. development zones and we'll start. Nope. Nope. That's cheating. We're not going to fall for that. Go away, loan shark. Well, that's one. <laughs> I shouldn't even tell you this, but legalized pot. Look at that money. This is actually very true, by the way. Yeah, like, so... The money is apparently way higher than I was expecting. That's a lot of money. Could could everything really be funded with just that alone? Not to that extent, but, like, it is a huge business. And, like, I, I don't quite believe it would be that much comparatively. Like, I don't think you could... I, I think that is comparable to the uh, maybe the I... half the education budget, which I don't think it's quite there. But Col Colorado paid off its state debt in two years after the, the one thing that I will pot. say about it is that even though I personally would never smoke pot, never take pot or any of its derivative products and such, because I personally don't want to ever have my mind or my brain inhibited or changed by a substance. Uh, that's why I don't even like drinking because, I mean, alcohol does that to you as well. Uh, it's one of those things where... I just feel like it should be regulated to be as safe can as be... possible for everyone. Right, and that's why having it legal would be able to result in more regulation. Regulation and development, as opposed to, you know, just pretending it's this, this devil's lettuce garbage. And, yeah, the so, and the thing, too, is... Uh, it is also, like, we, one we, of the primary reasons for people getting a... Well, it's not. It's probably not that actually high. But, like, there's a lot of in innocent people in jail just because, you know, they toked. And it's like... And it's one of those things, too, where we, we might have to deal with issues in the future of trying to prevent teens from getting their hands on it and a whole host of other things. We've already experienced that with alcohol. I do think, though, that... When people are bringing up cigarettes and stuff, I think that cigarettes should eventually well, go yeah. out the window because these I, companies I feel have like gotten away with consumption killing people. Of, yeah, I, I would say the unsafe consumption of some of these things should actually be looked at. Uh, same thing with alcohol and definitely with cigarettes. And with cigarettes, too, is people say, oh, you know, it's really only affecting the person who's taking it, right? No. no. With, with things like cigarettes, they're second and third hand smoke, and not to yeah. mention, how many times do you go outside and you just see cigarettes, uh, cigarette butts thrown on the, the street and, you know, seabirds eating them on beaches? It is it is disgusting, and it, cigarettes should have gone out the window long ago, but guess what? It was the tobacco industry that that wanted to keep I, I guess from my pockets. perspective I don't like the idea of people smoking pot for the most part just because it smells super bad and I really don't like walking past anybody smoking I really but I'm super all for edibles that that's the thing too I I think smoking in any form is bad it you're inhaling something into your lungs that you shouldn't and other people will inevitably smell it or potentially inhale it accidentally if it's around you. I, I feel bad, but there, there have been times where we've hopped on public transportation and I'm like, nope, skip that car because there's somebody that just positively reeks. And it's just like, I get it. It's it's your thing. But it's like, ugh. But I think that's mostly just my, my perspective of, like... In a way, things like this are... I, I don't want to say it's almost like... I don't want to say religion, but so long as it, it doesn't... Yeah, as long as it doesn't impinge on my life, on I honestly else. don't care. Anyway, done. Wait, you also gotta get people with marijuana-related convictions out of jail. Done. Wait, you also gotta invest in all the new revenues into communities effed over by the war on drugs. Done. Stop oh. right there. Let's not create another big tobacco. Go off for marijuana businesses. Labels, health standards. Done. Yeah, we need labels and health standards. Always. Definitely. This is what we were talking about. Gun nuts hates you. Let's enjoy some recreational shooting. Fine. Oh, no. wait, wait, wait. What? Well, yeah. Let me read this over again. So it's effectively saying the gun nuts hate me, so let's go shoot a gun. Uh, no. No. 
No, I don't I mean, have time to shoot guns. I, this is why I kind of wish there were some other options, because it's like, can I have a bow? Yeah, archery. Archery, yay. All right, anyways. The left must keep lefting. Your pro-labor agenda convinced millions of working-class non-voters to get back to party politics. This is very important. A voter's top priority changed. One person went from defense to um, workers' rights. That's good. The midterm elections are upon us. I'm a bit nervous. Yay! You maintain the same number of seats in Congress. And you still won. Yep. I'd like more Congress control. <laughs> That's weird. Okay. Is this a celebration? Sure, why not? Come on, talk. Oh my! We managed to control Congress. We'll be able to legislate as smoothly as we did so far. Cool. Support our presence in Afghanistan is near zero. Even conservatives, vets, and uh, conservative vets are advocating for withdrawal. Yep. End the endless war. Oh, look at all that free money. Wow, detaining immigrants in terrible for-profit prisons costs us a lot of money. Should we look for alternatives? Yes. Please do. We can fund community alternatives to detention and provide legal and educational resources for much less. Duh. Ooh, publishing our tax returns made our base realize that we were, in fact, quite wealthy. Uh-oh, people don't like that. Let's invest in big solar power plants. We got plenty of desert in the States. Go sun. Go what if it's cloudy? Go sun. <laughs> Go sun. Farmers got heaps of land. With little help, we can grow energy alongside the crops. Take a subsidy. Wait, wait, wait. What's this? So effectively, you would put up uh, windmills and solar farms around farms. Oh. Which is actually okay. really cool. So what's the focusing on food? That would probably not do anything, would it? Uh, no, no. it doesn't do anything. No, make it. Yeah. But like, yeah, why not? Yeah, let's help. The rural people make more money with their farmland. Whoop. At your earliest convenience, here's the draft for the Pentagon budget. Nothing new, only needs a rubber stamp. Let me look at this thing. Yeah, we need to look at things closely. Budget item, Space Force, brand new branch, <laughs> still figuring out its purpose. Very experiment, or what? very promising. This, this space, space Force. Force. So, I, okay. <laughs> okay, so. Hot take. <laughs> I'm actually fine with the idea of Space Force. Like, it's stupid as hell. Because honestly, Space Force should just be up the NASA budget. We, we need to get into space again somehow. The unfortunate thing would be is if it's for military applications. Yeah. So What we need is we need an asteroid buster so that in so, the instance of giant asteroids threatens the existence yeah. of all humanity. We so can blast it I, from space. I guess this is one where I'm actually a little biased because my dad works for a... Uh, my dad works for a government lab. But I'm a the Trekkie, military... so I kind of want a federation. But the military actually does push, like, a lot of science. So I could almost just understand, if handled really well, the Space Force could be incredible. But mainly we should just pay for NASA. We need to, we need to create some... Uh... Oh, but people are thinking that the spending is bad. Well, I, I'm just also thinking, as funny as it is to meme... We have NASA. We freaking have NASA. Yeah, why Why even call it Space Force? We should have NASA. A military divided, meme-wielding A party divided. Oh, a party divided, meme-wielding millennials, unseat venerable centrists. Oh, well, Hey, Congress control just went up. Okay. So, what are you going to wear to tomorrow's rally? T-shirt. T-shirts. T-shirt. We're... Something we can agree on. Increase funding for veterans. Long-term care. Education health. Duh. Mm -hmm. Budget item. F-22 and F-15 fighter jets. Obsolete but cool looking. More of a job creation program, to be honest. Very cool. Oh, get out of here. Oh, wait, what? Wait, 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 what's going on? So we're making these old school jets? 
Yeah. More of a job creation program, do you ask? Wait, why is everyone falling back? We're defunding. Uh, the, uh, the defense people and the industry people don't like this. But we get a lot more money back. Yeah. Okay. We also just really don't need that many jets. Mm -hmm. Ayo, bad guys win because they suppress the black vote. Bullshit ID laws, pulling station shutdowns, restore voting rights. Yeah, voting oh, rights. Oh gosh, this this is something. Even beyond like oh, current events. Oh, can you turn the music off? I noticed that we've been in the singing mode. Yeah. For I'll, a long time. I'll just turn on my own music for a while. Oh, okay. It's just ambient. Um, but uh, so oh, gosh. Everybody in the U.S. should vote. Everybody in the world should have a vote. But, like, obviously, only from the U.S. perspective. Let's see. What does it say for rules or rules? Uh, I, I think this doesn't really change too much currently, but I'm sure it does later. Um, but, yeah, ID laws are stupid. Like, I've... I've seen a lot of inquests into whether or not we have voter fraud, and I think the answer is it's very minimal. And most of the voter fraud is actually, like, disenfranchisement and um, people, like, losing votes. It's more on the uh, the actual system side as opposed to the people side. And the people, for the most part... Uh, the people, for the most part, that do engage in voter fraud are very small. And so whenever I see anyone arguing for why we need, like, proper voter ID and whatever garbage, the answer is, it's usually because I guess they're just suspicious of other people, and I kind of understand it. Voting day should be a national holiday, and it's ridiculous oh. that it isn't. I actually mildly disagree. What? There should be no such thing as voting day. I think there should be a voting week. Yeah, it should be a week, and it should be mail-in, and the only people that actually go into physical polling locations are the people that couldn't make it for whatever reason. And even then, it should be extremely optional. Hey, can't you just vote on vote in weekends? You should be able to. Or you can take the day off. But really, mailing your ballot Mail is so ballots. much nicer. Definitely. I I've done in-person voting m my entire political life. And specifically, since moving here, we had a packet with a ton of information telling us about the various candidates, what they stood for, uh, you know, so on and so forth, and then all we had to do is just fill it in, chuck it in an envelope, and drop it in a specific mailbox. We or, missed in the mailing date, so... Yeah, we missed the mailing date, so we had to drop it off in a box, but otherwise, yeah, just throw it, throw it in the mail, uh, and it's all good. At the same time, I mean, obviously people can go, well, what if those go missing? Or if, I mean, that's we'd have true, to make sure like, that we have people overseeing who collects them. Yeah. And so you, you absolutely do need to make at, sure that it's a fair and safe election. But at the like, same time, voting, voting machines so were hacked, nice. too, couldn't they be? What? At the same time, oh, voting yeah. machines can get hacked and well, change the, people's votes. Well, part of the reason why voting machines are so hackable is because we keep uh, farming it out to uh, the lowest common denominator, and that's a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. Anyway, restore voting rights, obviously. Yep. Maybe we should tax the middle class a bit more. And by middle class, I mean everybody. We honestly... Wait, 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 wait. What's going on? So, just raise taxes on everybody across the board? I don't want everyone to step back, but how much money are we getting from it? Up to max. Yeah, so we effectively double our war chest. Mm -hmm. I have mixed feelings on this one. I mean, realistically, uh, full disclosure, I, I'm a proponent of a substantive universal basic income slash like a really, really hefty lower limit on what a person can, can be at financially. I mean, also holding the companies accountable and lowering rent and a whole bunch of other reforms would help people be able to afford yeah things so, like that I, I think i'm gonna go with that money can be used to give it back later i'm for this yeah sure mm -hmm. bam we have an extravagant budget surplus when the bar is full the extra money goes to a new sovereign wealth fund 
and it's used to buy shares in existing companies. Basically, we slowly and legally socialize the means of production. I like this lady. She is devious. Turbines, turbines everywhere. The wind generation potential is nine times our energy demand. Go with wind. Wind. Look at that go. When we were driving through Idaho and Wyoming, and or which states were the ones that we were driving through with all the wind farms? Uh, Idaho, especially. And that Idaho was just has a lot lovely, of shrubland. Just banks of windmills just sitting over these these picturesque hills. And I'm sure to some degree it would be nice to see the hills without the windmills. But at the same time, they're cool looking. Yep, I mean, obviously there are... I know that a lot of people say, ooh, they're ugly. And then they also have issues with birds flying into them. But I think they've, they've been slowly finding means to... Well, yeah. They have to be very careful about where they build them so that they don't stop bird migrations, but then also have sonic or some other means to, like, keep I I truly should them. ask my mother about this, because that is literally her job. That's what she works with. It is actually, yeah, she works with the uh, Massachusetts State Energy Commission or whatever it is. Yes, but look at that. We have pretty good money, pretty good people's power, and we're starting to finally chip away at And we're only, what, pollution. two and a half, three years into... And look, Congress is doing pretty well. Yeah. I, I I do feel like this game is a little preachy and a little idealistic, but... It's so idealistic, it, but I'd love it if we actually could pass some of these things. This is... <laughs> what, what we are currently living through is effectively uh, <laughs> uncomfortable terminology, but my political wet dream in terms of, like, gosh, all the things that we could do... Wait, wait, wait. That's what you call it? I mean, Why it's a terrible... Refer- why did it's, you refer to it as a wet dream? That's kind of gross. I know it's kind of gross, but That's whatever. It's gross. But it's like... Okay. Make Ma- public transportation sexy with major investment. We can fix and expand our sad infrastructure. Hell yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, I want to talk about this. Why did you skip it so we much? We can keep going. Okay. We can talk about it. All right. So the other option was, you know, no, cars are, are awesome. Car culture. So, like... The reason why people love cars is it's your ticket to be able to go places where you want them and have this flashy machine that's kind of an extension of yourself that you pilot. Like, I suppose it's the one instance in which you're piloting a large vehicle. But the thing is, back in the day, trains were very efficient at especially bringing loads of produce and and products from one coast to the next and, and whatnot. And unfortunately, with the advent of the the personal vehicle industry, you had a bunch of roads being built. And those roads are taking up land that could be used for so many other purposes. But at the, at the same time, too, I think it was the tire industry and obviously the, the gasoline and fuel industry that wanted to continue making money to the point where they were actually encouraging cities to destroy what trolleys and trains and above ground trams and subways I, I just, and I just hate cars. They're uncomfortable and you know from Think of like, all the people that die in car accidents. Too. Yeah. And like they're also kind of slow. Like you can have hella fast trains that are super safe. But if there's too much traffic then you have people stuck in traffic for hours. Remember our, our little drive through LA to yeah. get to the It sucked. To it took us studio? two hours to get from one side to the other. And, like, if we had trains as good as Japan's, I could take a train from Seattle to San Diego in, like, an afternoon. And that would be so nice. We need high-speed rails for major cities. Like, just to have them between major cities would help so much. And we need to get those giant trucks off the road. Yeah. The And it, it would just lead to lower pollution. It would be far more efficient. It would be safer for people. There's just... Huh. What? So... Uh, Somebody brought up the fact that there's a solar bank in Arizona that actually was able to burn birds. And I heard a lot of people dismiss that as not true. But I guess it is. Wait, what's going on? A solar something? A solar plant. Yeah, incinerating birds. I actually straight up did not know this is physically possible. Well, is is there enough reflective material below them to actually burn them while they fly over it? That's That would be the one instance... I could think of. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Fences endanger tortoises. Yeah. One way or another, I would say that's something the regulation and better science 
to control. I mean, if they built them on upraised platforms, would that help? Okay, the focus mirror ray on the solar water heater has since been adjusted. No birds have been combusted since. That's what I figured. It's like, it's it's a popular story to say as an example to like shut it down. But at the same time, it does feel like... um. Uh, it, it does feel like that's easily fixed. You have a problem, you fix it. You don't just say like, well, it's dumb, let's not do it. Oh, also, suborbital. I didn't even notice you were hanging Hi. out there for a second, but how how are you doing? I guess good morning. Uh, you were, you were in the side of the world where it would be morning as opposed to us where it's stupid late, but that's okay. Yeah, Windows killed birds too, but that doesn't mean we should stop using them. Excuse me, I prefer an open concept house, as in a computer out in a field. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, no. Uh, let's see, you prefer driving because you can choose exactly where and when you want to go somewhere, and we only have one train station where I live. Uh, and that's oh, just yeah, to enter town. Definitely for rural areas, I yeah. can understand why having a vehicle helps, and but even like, in suburbia. But at the same of, time... If you've ever been to a big city... Think of how much space in that city was dedicated to roads for cars. And, like, imagine how beautiful L.A. would be if you just had a subway system, maybe buses, but otherwise, no cars. I think the thing, too, is with cars... You would need one hell of a public transportation system for that to work, but it would make the city so much nicer in so many regards, and you'd have so much space. Well, the other thing, too, is back in the past, most families only needed one vehicle, and they tended... The thing is, there's no incentive right now for people to buy fuel-efficient vehicles and such. My car is very fairly fuel-efficient, but we see way too many vanity monster trucks driving around with terrible bumper stickers on them implying that it's their right to you know pollute and I uh, bully people on the road because I have my monster truck and I think that those should be de-incentivized especially that and also oh, yeah. This yeah, we have so many people with unnecessary like stupid looking monster trucks all over the place here mm-hmm yeah, people are bringing up that there were train stations until cars came about. Yep, back in my home city, there used to be a, a train station subway system to go in and out of the city, but the highways took over, and yeah. I don't know, it, it's one of those things where we would definitely want to support public transportation because that will also give more mobility to people who can't afford vehicles, yeah. and it will provide yeah. mobility to people who just want to use their vehicles less or maybe a peop a family that just wants to own one vehicle oh gosh we live in a neighborhood where almost nobody has room for all of their cars and so they line the streets and stuff and i think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we do have a lot of single car garage yeah homes they're small here. garages and a lot of people have converted those into usable rooms but then they will have like three four cars on the street and we have space for it but it's still just like what if every family only needed one car just so they could do their errands and a couple other things? And if more people could work from home, like we were, we were discussing way, way before, then you would have people that didn't need to spend... What is it? How many? How much time does the average person spend in their lifetime commuting? A Me considerable portion. I'm I am eternally thankful the only commutes we ever have to do are the ones that we specifically want to. 